The goal of the speedrunner RCU build with circuits is to ensure that machines don't buffer ingredients while they're working and let other machines take them, ensuring all resources are transformed into RCUs as fast as possible. If you want to know exactly how it does that and how to build it, stick around. The RCU build has three main components. The first is a double input belt, one for each resource, which allows us to use one inserter for each uh, resource, which can then be control, controlled using circuitry. Uh, the second component is the a looping belt, which uh, allows the materials to circulate and go to machines they are needed instead of piling up in, at the end of the belt. And thirdly, we have the circuitry around, around the, the assembly machine, which we will look into with further detail. The circuitry around each assembler connects all inserters with a single wire to a decider combinator, which acts as a resettable counter. The, all inserters have read hand contents enabled, so we know when they output or input something. And the input inserters also have an enabled condition, so we can control when they are not when they when they are not allowed to pick up anymore. The decider combinator, let's show it. The decider combinator has a wire uh, from its input to its output, and outputs every everything on the wire uh, if a condition is met. This condition is also always true unless the output inserter is holding uh, an RCU. What happens is that when the input inserter picks up an item, for example a processing unit, the decider combinator will remember the item was picked up. This sets the, the signal to have a processing unit 1, which is no longer, which makes this condition no longer true and disables the inserter. This happens until until the output inserter outputs the, the RCU and the condition is reset to have no signal at all and the inserter is again enabled. So now let's see the build in action. I've, ha I've added three items on the chests and as you can see the first, the first assembler picked up the items and didn't pick up anymore. In a normal build, this assembler would have picked up three items, three items because it buffers two, and it would be the only one working. In this build, we have three of the assemblers working. As you can see, the, the combinator is remembering all the signals, all the inputs that were taken, and the uh, inserters are disabled uh, for, for more and the inserters are disabled. So this will happen until this one outputs the RCU, which should be shortly. And now the, the, the input inserters are enabled again, and we could, for example, uh, add another. So this one inputted, remembered, and now it's disabled again. Let's now discuss how to lay down the build. At this point in the game, you should have bots, so they'll help. They'll help a lot with that. Uh, so you'll, we'll just do a little, a little template, and then, and then let the bots do the rest with cop using copy paste. So what we usually do is set up uh, an assembler, the, the inserters, and we connect them all with wire. We then set up the conditions, read hand contents here with none. On this one, it's uh, read hand contents and we set a condition for blue circuits. I usually do blue circuits on the first one. And for the second one, we copy paste. And then use, just, just need to change this. So this means we don't have to set the read hand contents or the, con or the operator here. Uh, we can set the recipe of the assembler if we if we have it, and we can set the conditions for the. And we can now set the condition for this. So it's RCU equal to zero, and the output is. We can now set up the belts. These are the two input belts, the output belt. 
we then copy paste for the bottom one and we fix the input belt the output belt I mean uh, since we rotated since we rotated the assembler and the inserters this will be wrong this will have the condition for the wrong side of the belts as you can see it's speed module on the side of the belt where the other one is uh, processing it so now we have to correct that and we do that by copy pasting the conditions from top to bottom after this we have one side one potential side and we now uh, copy it so we have uh, this set so we can easily power with the least amount of um, with the least amount of electric poles I don't think I have enough electric poles on the network anyway continuing uh, after this we double this and we will rotate we will rotate so we have the the looping belt on the other side and since we rotated both the belts and the assemblers these will be correct we can check that later and but this won't be so switch that again we can then uh, to build you can build uh, there are two builds that people do either 64 assemblers or 80 assemblers I usually do 64 because I'm on the slower side if I were competing for higher higher values I'd probably do the 80 but uh, what I do here is uh, copy paste this for a total of four times which gives me 32 assemblers and then we do another copy paste of the whole build for the full 64 assemblers now we have to connect the the looping belts and we can tell bots to do the same on the other side like such oops Stop walking on belt now bots will build all this we can also do the out, the output which i usually just uh, merge all into one belt you can do this in, in many ways it's not really important and don't forget since we usually since we will usually have uh, handcrafted uh, the combinators we need to provide them to two bots using a using a provider chest now let bots finish the build uh, bots are missing power poles, which we will give them also. I forgot to set up the power poles here. Uh, okay, so now we have a lot of this, so let's just double check that everything's alright. So these were copy pasted. These have the conditions. Uh, we can check that they have the wire. And this is alright. We have none, no mode of operation, read hand contents, pulse. This one has a condition. This one has the condition for the other. For the other, all of them have read and contents, and this one is correct also on the other side. So the top one, top one is uh, processing units. The bottom one is uh, speed modules. Further down ahead, same thing. This one is speed modules, which is on the bottom belt because it is rotated. So this belt is the speed module one. It rotates so. On the top here it's speed modules, on the bottom is processing units and we have the same on the other side. So everything is correct. Now we need to find to input the input the resources and separate them. So what we, we use a splitter for that, we just separate them by processing unit and we use another splitter here to 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 serve as the input so we come here we have a here a belt with that let's just more convenient and we only start up the build once everything is built and more particularly when the decider combinators are built otherwise the conditions will not work so let's get this started and input just a few and now as you can see it's working it's working everything is working we are not buffering components and we have as many machines working as the as the resources we've inputted 
So this will build this will build the, the RCUs as fast as, as the resources come. We've consumed the whole belt and all the, all machines are working and all machines that can work are working. So this is a really fast way to to get to get RCUs up and running and build them fast enough for the for the rock for launching the rocket silo. Uh, 